Hey guys, we are Sean and Christy. This is Long Long Honeymoon, and today we have an excellent discussion topic for you. RV campground etiquette. And we're going to give you 10 rules to live by. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like people telling me what to do. Yeah. So I don't feel comfortable really telling you what to do. But these rules of etiquette are really for all of us. They're mostly common sense and common courtesy. If anything, this is probably just a refresher of like things to remember. Yeah, the point of RV camping is to get out there, relax, have a good time. And hopefully, if everybody's observing these rules, we'll all have a better time. Number one, we're going to talk about late arrivals. If you roll up late to a campground, and we've all probably done it a time or two. It happens. You know, you get caught up on the road somewhere. You have a, a problem with your vehicle. Just be considerate of all the people who have already set up camp. Yeah. If we roll into a campground later in the day, we sometimes don't even bother going through the whole campsite setup process. We'll just like pull in, may or may not even unhitch our rig and we'll worry about setting up camp the next day. Yeah, we basically plug into the power and then go in for the night and that's it. Also think about if you're an early departure person, hitch up the night before and that way you're sort of ready to go the next day and all you gotta do is unplug from your power and disconnect your water and go. Number two, and this is a big one, you've got to observe the quiet hours of the campground. We're going to start out the quiet hour discussion <laughs> with a discussion of open frame generators. Now, we spend a lot of time looking at different inverter generators for mm -hmm. RV camping because they are so much more quiet than open frame generators. Mm -hmm. Open frame generators really are not appropriate for most campground use. Yeah, they're basically for construction sites. They're so unpleasant and they ruin the ambiance of wherever you are <laughs> so quickly. We had a situation where we were once in an, one of our favorite national park campgrounds with a couple of really great friends and we were sitting down to have a uh, fantastic evening by the campfire mm -hmm. and somebody one campsite over started an open frame generator at like eight o'clock at night <laughs> and ran it for the next two hours because their generator was so loud it was like we were having to yell at each other across the campfire just to understand what the other person was saying <laughs> It's just really rude and inconsiderate to do that to people. Yeah, especially when you see people out, you know, by their campfire, they're, they're cooking dinner, they're sort of kicked back, enjoying the view, and then it's like, let's start the jackhammer. Okay. I know some people say, well, we can't afford a Honda or a Yamaha. Maybe not, but there are a lot of other lower cost inverter generators out there on the market. Yeah. And we will continually be reviewing those here on our channel. But today, there are a plethora of options that are very inexpensive compared to, you know, the Honda and the, the Yamaha. And in fact, they're about what you would pay for an open frame generator. Along these lines, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, we like to have music out by the campsite sometimes yeah. but just be considerate of your neighbors again yeah. it's just common sense common courtesy <laughs> only play music that we enjoy personally <laughs> so i guess that means no engelbert humperdinck oh, i'm sad. sorry sad. but you can play all the metallica and acdc <laughs> you want <laughs> respecting others campsites so I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but we've had this happen a few times. If you are the fortunate people to be at the campsite that is near the bathhouse, sometimes people will cut through your campsite to get to the bathhouse rather than walk the extra 50 feet to the dedicated path to the bathhouse. And that's just poor etiquette. You don't want to cut through somebody's campsite. You know, it's sort of like their backyard. And that's you know? being lazy. Yeah, don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. <laughs> Walk the extra 50 feet right. and, and it's respect rude. And other it people. And also, you know, be startling. Like if you're in your camper and it's, you know, 
four in the morning and you hear somebody like right out next to, next door to your camper, you're sort of like, what, what's going on out there? We've seen this in Grand Teton National Park, for example, and a lot of times photographers will come out to the campground and they'll be photographing moose or what have you. Right. And we've seen them cut through other people's campsites and it's just considered kind of poor form it's it's poor etiquette especially if you're not staying in the campground yeah <laughs> but even if you're staying in the campground whenever possible avoid cutting through somebody's site that's kind of like their little piece of turf right <laughs> obviously you need to pick up after your pet if you are a dog you owner you have to pick up so after you. we carry around a shovel behind this three and a half pound chihuahua Even we don't want to leave landmines behind for the next <laughs> camper hope you know we're talking about you oh poor baby girl <laughs> <laughs> on to the sewer hose if there are any spills at the dump station you want to wash all that stuff down yeah and, and it, if it's never happened to you just wait one day something's going to go wrong a hose is going to come undone or something's going to start leaking you never know but eventually it will happen to you and you just need to rinse it down just don't leave any unpleasant surprises for the next fellow who comes to the dump station. That's okay. right. The laundry room. Yeah, laundry rooms can be a tricky area. It's people's clothes. It's their personal stuff. So don't leave your stuff sitting in the laundry room. Try to set a timer on your phone or your watch or whatever to make sure you get back and take your stuff out of the washing machine or out of the dryer when it's done so that it's not holding up the line of other folks. And also, if you encounter people's stuff, don't move it which I know that's hard to do because you're like, it's just sitting there, you know, it's blocking up the washing machine or the dryer, but still, touching other people's underwear, I would rather not do it. Yeah, I would say if they're leaving it in a machine for an extended period of time, I'd probably start my timer. I'd say, all right, buddy, you yeah. got, you got, what, 15 minutes? Yeah, or, you know, go, if, if it's near an office, go to the office and say, hey, I think somebody's left all their stuff in this machine seems to have been in there for a while and then maybe let them take care of it. and that's a learning curve as well and depends on whatever campground you're in some of them don't post signs to let you know how long a wash cycle takes and most of the time that's why i just stay with our laundry while it's washing so next if you use the bathhouse don't leave a mess behind you're sharing this bathhouse with other people when you're shampooing or using soap or whatever and you get it all over the place spray it down you know so the next person doesn't walk into your shaving cream all over the wall because it's just kind of gross. Girls, if you got long hair and you shed a lot in the shower, I know I do. I always clean out the hair that I leave behind in the the drain just because nobody else wants to walk in and see that. That's kind of kind of gross. So just clean up after yourself with those little basic things. It takes less than five minutes to do, and it makes the experience more pleasant for everybody. Finally. Clean up your campsite before you leave and don't leave trash or garbage behind in your campsite. This seems absolutely obvious, but you'd be surprised. We have seen, even in state parks, trash left behind in campsites. So we're staying in a beautiful Louisiana state park. And look, here's some garbage that some people have left behind in their campsite, even though there is a garbage can located right there. I've never seen a better example of laziness yeah. and just inconsiderate behavior. Again, it should be just common courtesy not to do things like that. Yeah. Uh, and along these lines, don't use your fire pit as a garbage can. Now, we've probably all burned a few things in the fire pit from time to time. Yeah. but you and know. that's one thing, as long as you burn it completely up, yeah. you know, but half-burned things left behind. Don't attempt to dispose of dead bodies in the fire pit. <laughs> so that's it, guys. At least 10 tips or unwritten rules of RV campground etiquette. Again, we are not preachers. We are not perfect. I don't really like wagging my finger at people and telling you what to do, but if we all observe these unwritten rules, we'll all have a better time out there in the campground. Yeah, and I'm sure we've left some things off that you guys are saying, hey, what about this or that? So if there is a campground etiquette rule that we missed, leave it in the comments below. We'd love to see what you say or hear some of your horror stories like our generator 
lady next door. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family. I'm assuming you've already subscribed. If not, do that. And then click the bell button because that way you will get a notification every time we post a new Long Long Honeymoon video. As always, thank you for tuning in. This is where we say, lo lo ho. Hey guys, if you like our videos, a great way to say gracias, senor, is to visit our store on Amazon. You can go directly to amazon.com slash shop slash long long honeymoon, or you can go to longlonghoneymoon.com and click the large supply store icon on the main page. The icon is so large, I don't even need my eyeglasses to see it. In our store, you will find all sorts of cool stuff, including Long Long Honeymoon hoodies, Long Long Honeymoon t-shirts, my hat, my shoes, my old underwear, my self-respect, everything must go. Proceeds from our Amazon store are reinvested into our show, which requires large amounts of duct tape and lubricant to keep running smoothly. Who let the flies out? So, you stuck around until after the end of the video, so we're gonna give you one little bonus tip and it concerns approaching us in campgrounds. Oh. <laughs> That's an interesting topic, isn't it? Because we get comments from time to time and people say, well, I saw you in this campground and I wanted to go over and say hello, but I didn't want to bug you. So I'm just going to come out and say, yeah. if you see us and we're out and about in the campground, don't hesitate to say hello. We enjoy that. In fact, I'm still kind of flattered that anybody is watching our videos and wants to talk to us. So, you know, if you want to do that, that's totally fine. I mean, some people say that if you're in a campground and other campers have their shades drawn and the door shut, then you should just kind of give them a pass. Right. And that's not unreasonable. I'm not saying just for us, but probably for any other RV camper. Yeah, but if your door's open or your shades are up, then that's sort of like a sign of saying, "Hey, come on over." We're yeah, I think with regard to us, if you you know, if you certainly if you see us out and about in the campground or around the campsite, we're always yeah. Happy. Please say hello because yeah. it's fun for us to meet you guys and you know put faces with names and that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, overall, it's, it's always really uh, a big boost, usually, when we meet you guys yeah. out and about. So don't hesitate to say hello. And uh, also, just, just don't be offended if everything looks shut down and we're inside and it's quiet and we might be taking a nap or whatever. How about you, baby girl? Got any etiquette tips? What do you think, baby girl? Baby girl says, don't poke the sleeping chihuahua. That's right. Let the sleeping chihuahua lie. <laughs>